In this lecture, we're going to talk about a very important concept in physics known as energy. Now, energy is not a tangible concept. In other words, you can't touch energy, you can't feel energy, you can't create a ball of energy and then go play basketball with that ball of energy. That's not what energy is. Energy is defined in the following way. Energy is a man-made concept created by scientists that is used to explain certain phenomena that we observe in nature. For example, a moving object hits a second object that is stationary and that second object can begin moving. And if it, and if it begins moving, that second object is said to gain energy in the form of kinetic energy. So energy, once again, is simply a made-up concept that helps us explain certain events and certain phenomena as they occur in nature. Now, energy has the units joules, and joules are used to describe large systems, macro systems, for example, moving cars and moving trains and large moving objects and even stationary objects because uh, not only moving objects have energy but also stationary objects have energy. Now, electron volts, or EV, are used when describing systems on the atomic scale. So, microsystems, such as atoms and compounds and molecules, electrons and protons and neutrons, these guys are all described using electron volts. These are simply very, very small units of joules. Now, recall that whenever an electron, a moving charge, moves through an electric field, it has the ability to do useful work. And the amount of energy that a moving charge has when it moves through some voltage, through some electric potential, is given by the following formula. Our energy equals Q times V, where V is simply voltage given in electric field times distance. So, the amount of charge that moves a certain distance in some electric field is given by the following formula, which gives us joules, energy. And this equals, now suppose we're talking about one electron flowing some distance D with some electric field or through some electric field. Then we can say, because one electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs, we simply plug that in and suppose our voltage is 1 volt. Well, then we can plug in our values and we see that our energy of one electron when it moves through a voltage of 1 volt has an energy of 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 joules. And this is defined as one electron volt. So two electron volts simply means we have two electrons. A thousand electron volts simply means we have a thousand electrons and so on. Now notice unlike force, unlike placement, um, energy is a scalar. That means we only have magnitude and no direction. Now sometimes people say an object or a system gained energy with a plus and sometimes we say energy was lost with a minus. Well that simply means if energy was gained or lost. So if I'm the object and I push somebody, I lost energy. So my energy is negative. I lost energy. Likewise, if somebody pushes me, me, the object, gained energy. So I get energy with a plus sign. Now, there are different types of energies that exist. We could break down all energies into two types, mechanical energy and non-mechanical energy. So let's begin with mechanical energy. Now mechanical energy is simply energy found in macroscopic systems. So once again, macroscopic systems are described using joules. And this energy can be broken down into kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is simply the energy due to motion of objects. And it's given by the following formula. Kinetic energy is equal to one-half mass times V squared. So earlier we spoke about a moving object. And that moving object, if it has some velocity V and some mass M, we can find the amount of kinetic energy stored in its motion by using the following formula. Now there are different types of kinetic energies. There is translational, rotational, and vibrational kinetic energy. So now let's examine a second type of mechanical energy known as potential energy. Now potential energy is the energy due to the position or placement of object or objects. And there are two types of potential energies. 
there's gravitational potential energy and electric potential energy. So let's begin with the gravitational. Gravitational potential energy is simply the energy that exists due to attraction of two or more masses. So suppose I have two masses, mass one and mass two, and, and the distance between their center of masses is r. If I want to find the force that each object exerts on the other object, I simply use the universal law of gravitational. Namely, force equals gravitational constant 6.67 times 10 to negative 11, but multiplied by mass 1 in kilograms, multiplied by mass 2 also in kilograms, divided by the distance between their center of mass r squared given in meters. Now remember, force times distance gives you the energy. So if I want to find the energy due to the position of these two masses, I simply use the following formula. I take my force and multiply it by my d, my distance, in this case r. And what I see if I multiply by r is that r's will cancel on the bottom and I'll have one r on the bottom. So my energy is u equals g times mass 1 times mass 2 divided by r, the distance between their center of masses. Now if I'm talking about one mass being the earth and a second mass being some object on the earth's surface, I could find my gravitational potential energy using this formula, which actually comes from this formula. So I take my mass, I multiply it by g, my gravitational field that's created due to the Earth and multiplied by my h, my distance. Note that g times h gives us the gravitational potential of the object. So I multiply it by the mass and I get my energy. So now let's look at electric potential energy. Now this is the energy that exists due to the attraction or repulsion of one or actually two or, or more charges. So let's suppose I have one charge with the charge Q1 and a second charge with the charge Q2. And their center of masses is once again a distance r apart. To find the force that each object, each charge creates on the other charge, now I use something called Coulomb's law, which is given by the following formula, F equals K, now the Coulomb's constant, multiplied by charge 1, multiplied by charge 2, divided by the distance between their center of mass squared. And once again, if I want to find my energy, I simply multiply F by the distance, in this case R, so F times R gives us F t uh, this guy times R, R's cancel, and I'm left with a similar formula, except now I have my constant K and my two charges, Q1 and Q2. Now, there's an equivalent expression like this one for electric potential energy, and that is this formula. The energy is equal to charge, in this case it was mass, but now it's charge. The electric field, in this case it was the potential field, and h is the distance. Likewise, we have h distance here as well.